Don't worry, it's not a big cat. Eye of the storm. Claire and Jamie finally find Yang Yin and wash up on unexpected shores. Twenty years and thousands of miles have brought us here, to the sprawling Jamaican plantation owned by July Sabernathy Nate Duncan where Yang Yin has been held captive. It's here that Claire must face her one-time friend and rescuer in order to save her nephew. She is, after all, the only one left for the task after Jamie was parted away by Captain Leonard in last week's penultimate episode. So it is our heroine prowls the estate under the cover of darkness, whisper yelling Yin's name. She spies the dog sniffing around a pile of hay. Upon investigation, she does indeed find a young man's body buried beneath, but it isn't Yin's. She has little time to plan her next move before she grabs from behind by one of July's henchmen. Young Yin, meanwhile, is in the middle of being interrogated by July, who is certain that it is Claire, not Jamie, who is after the third sapphire. Yin denies those claims but is quickly carted away when July gets word that Claire has turned up. Claire, for her part, faints ignorance about snooping around the property, apologizing for the late hour and explaining that she got lost trying to find the house after her husband was taken into custody. You're welcome anytime, Jilai says. We're friends. They sit and visit, with neither initially revealing her true purpose. But Jilai can't contain herself and her suspicions for long. She asks Claire why, after everything she's done for her, she won't be honest with her. Claire doesn't understand. Jilai begins ranting about the sapphires and the prophecy. Claire, again, is baffled and attempts to plead her innocence. How could she have been orchestrating anything of the sort these past 20 years? seeing as she'd been back in the future in Boston. G.I. doesn't think it possible for Claire to ever leave Jamie's side, let alone pass through the stones three separate occasions without dying. Claire explained that it was all in service of saving their unborn child, showing G.I. a photograph of now 20-year-old Breathe. A 200-year-old baby, G.I.'s muses. Imagine that. G.I.'s hastily stuffs the photo down her robe and has her manservant usher Claire to a guest room to stay as long as she needs. Which won't be long if Jamie has anything to do with it. The scoutsman and his captors are soon intercepted by John Gray's men and brought in for questioning. Where is their warrant? Their affidavit? Captain Leonard admits to Gray that he has neither. Surely you don't mean to arrest a British subject based on the scurrilous gossip of the lower deck, Gray asks incredulously. The captain tries to further assert his authority, but Gray will have none of it. Your authority ends at the water's edge, he reproaches him. Which is precisely where my authority begins. So Jamie is once again indebted to Gray for his life. It seems we've been indebted to each other so many times, I'd lost count, Gray says. Until the next time then, says Jamie, bidding him farewell.